Born and raised in Denton, Montana, Wayne Edwards spent nearly all of his life there working as a banker. Wayne's book, Pacer Cooley Chronicles, is set in a fictional small town that is much like Denton. The school is the heart of the community, and school athletics is the main topic of conversation at the cafe. There are not enough people to go around, so people were often tapped to do things they would not be asked to do if they lived in a larger community. At one point in Denton, for example, Wayne himself, whose only experience with football up to that time was as a player, was tapped as the high school football coach. In his two key roles as in the community, both as banker and as coach, Wayne had a front row seat to observe the changes that were happening in his rural community over a period of decades. As population shrunk in rural areas, school enrollment declined. Eventually, small districts had to merge their sports teams just to have enough players to field a team for eight-man football. More recently, districts themselves have had to consolidate their schools. The impact on the community identity has been profound. We had a broad discussion of these issues and ended up with 45 minutes of recording. I had to cut a lot of material. The discussion is highly relevant, though, to understanding the background of Pacer Cooley Chronicles, so I want to make it available. Here it is as a bonus video to go with our With a Cup of Tea episode we recorded on September 22, 2021. You've you've seen some changes over the years, I think, in rural, uh, you know, life. Uh, what what have you seen? Well, why, why do you suppose it happened? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very interesting dynamic, I, I think, for, especially from anyone who grew up in that sort of environment. And like I say, I'm an old guy. I grew up in the '50s and the '60s, and uh, uh, in this small town. And, and let me first say that uh, I should define what I'm talking about when I, when I write about small towns, you know, that's, that's relative, you know, from somebody that lives in a large uh, urban metropolitan area, you know, a town, a city of, you know, Billings is small to them, you know, uh, a town of somewhat over 100 hundred and some thousand uh, in their eyes, that's a small town. And, you know, that's the biggest city in Montana. And uh, so you got to have a little perspective there. But I write about towns like like Denton, uh, you know, town populations of somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 to say 15, 1500 people. So when I talk about small towns here, that's the that's the reference that I'm referring to uh, really small towns. And, you know, uh, I, I would encourage anybody to uh, who's watching this to uh, take a little Google tour of downtown Denton and, uh, you know, to get the perspective on actually the size of it. Uh, you know, it's a pretty quick tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. And so uh, back to what those changes have been, you know, when I look, look back, and I'm going to use some examples from my days at Denton to, to make my points here, Mark, if I may. Uh, one thing that has occurred, uh, you know, I graduated in 71, which was 50 years ago, which seems like a long time, but really in the scope of uh, scope of things and, and changes in society and, and uh, what have you, that's really not that long of, of time. And I graduated in a, a there were 32 or three kids, I believe, in my graduating class in 71. We had 120 to 130 kids in our grades 9 through 12 in our high school. Uh, to show you what's happened in those 50 years is that this year there are seven kids, you know, in our in our little high school. And so what I have seen. Uh, is a precipitous drop in rural small town populations and school enrollments. And what that has resulted in, uh, again, going back to my area of, of small towns, around Lewistown there, you know, there's Denton, there's Stanford, there's Hobson, there's Moore, there's Grass Range, there's Winifred, there's Roy, there's Winnet. Uh, 
you know, all little, similar little two, three hundred people towns, just like just like Denton. But in those days, each of those uh, had a pretty good sized, uh, you know, school, and they everyone could field their own teams, right? And uh, so what has happened uh, since then with this drop in, in enrollment is we have seen a tremendous uh, consolidation uh, going on in response to the, the drop in, in enrollment. And for example, Denton now, which obviously for years and years fielded their own uh, team, are now co-oping uh, for sports purposes with four other schools, Stanford, Geyser, Grass Range, and Winnet, in order to get enough kids to field a six-man football team. Yeah. So, you know, that, that is, a, is a big change, a big dynamic. And if you look into past years, you know, you and I talked before we came on uh, here, you mentioned Plevna. You know, I can think of some some schools up up north, uh, you know, Kremlin, Guilford, Rudyard, uh, you know, in the 50s and 60s, all of those towns, you know, had their own. Uh, they were similar to Denton. They had pretty decent school enrollments and they all fielded their own teams. And, 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 and not only has there been a lot of co-oping go on, uh, the result of this has been a lot of school closures and our schools, uh, consolidating uh, for school purposes, not just for sporting uh, sports purposes. So uh, it's, it's been a big, big deal in the way that it's, uh, that it's happened over the years. And, you know, you mentioned Googling downtown Denton. Here, here's the second thing that I, that I saw from the, my years of the 50s and 60s was you know, all these little towns, I mean, the Main Street business district might only be one block long or two at the most, but the, it was fairly robust, fairly vibrant. There were lots of mom and pa businesses, uh, you know, mom and pa hardware stores, mom and pa grocers, mom and pa, you know, you know restaurants, uh, uh, all that sort of thing. And in, uh, Unfortunately, in this day and age, uh, you know, unless it's directly related to agriculture, uh, as in fertilizer and chemical or feed stores or, or what have you, uh, there's a lot of those old downtown uh, buildings that are boarded up now. And uh, so, and it's not all totally due to uh, the population decline. I mean, we, we certainly have seen the impact of the big box stores, obviously of online shopping. And that's changed things for all of us, no matter where you live, not just small town, but it particularly affected, I think, uh, small town America where, you know, that mom and pa hardware store could no longer compete with the Home Depot and Lowe's and Billings and Great Falls and, uh, and then, of course, when the with the advent of online shopping, uh, that even further, you know, uh, created uh, problems for those local local businesses. Uh, why has this all happened? Why has this population decline happened? Uh, one of the things I, I think, and I'll try to be brief here, Mark, but I. Uh, is technology, and you might not think technology affects agriculture all that much, but it, it, it's had a tremendous effect, and as, especially in uh, uh, equipment and uh, that's used in, the, in farm and ranch production. And uh, I'll, I'll run you back to an example again. And, and, you know, I worked for, for uh, uh, folks around Denton there in harvest uh, season back in the, in the 60s and when I was in high school. And uh, the guy I worked for, uh, he had three combines, which in, the, in those days, they had like 14, 16 foot headers. Uh, those were the biggest at the time. So we'd use three of those machines. Well, if you take one of these newer 45 foot header <laughs> combines that they have today 
they can do twice as much work in a day as those three uh, could do. So that's, that's one thing. My point being that it has reduced the labor aspect of, of, uh, of agriculture considerably from those days uh, years ago. Uh, I think the second thing that's happened is, is I'll refer to it as an economy of scale type of thing. Uh, again, when I was growing up uh, back there in Denton, uh, there were many families that could make a living on a section or two of ground, uh, you know, a section being 640 acres. And uh, well, that's not the case uh, today, obviously. And uh, you need five or six times that sort of acreage uh, to efficiently run an operation. Uh, so that's, you know, if you take, if you take six sections uh, back in 1950, where there might have been six families on those six sections, today there's one. And uh, so that has a big impact uh, accounting for the drop in, in school enrollment and uh, town population, because you just flat don't have the the labor uh, requirements that you that you did back in those years. So I think those are the those are the major uh, things that have impacted uh, rural agricultural Montana and America in general. And uh, uh, that's what we're that's what we're seeing. And to me, uh, you know, a guy that grew up in a in a small town, which, like I say, was quite robust and uh, nice size school uh, when I was growing up, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at possible, you know, closure here at, at some time, uh, probably in the very near future. And, uh, or at least, you know, some sort of adaptation to what has, mm -hmm. to what has occurred. So, uh, frankly, it, 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 saddens me as a guy that grew up uh, in a very different uh, small town environment. You know, uh, I was just thinking a little bit about uh, my experience in some other uh, very rural schools. And uh, I had an experience working one day with a little girl in Belfry. And we took a break from what we were doing. And she said, would you like to see a picture of my grandfather? And I said, well, sure, you know. <laughs> and so uh, we went out to, to the hallway and she showed, she found a picture of her grandfather from a class, you know, uh, two generations before. And then her father and her uncles and everybody, you know, it was like, it was like, the entire history and the heart of the community was right there in that hallway. And, you know, now like, like Denton, I mean, uh, you know, Belfry, which was very prosperous in its day, uh, you know, it's a tiny class now in the high school. Yeah. And it's, you know, and they, they don't want to consolidate with, right. with like Bridger because you know, you lose the heart of the community. You do. The school is the absolute heart of the community, and if you, and so they obviously uh, fight that as long as they as they possibly can. And I totally get why. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me ask: Is this reflected in your uh, in your book? Then, uh... you know, not, not directly, but. Uh, I think in a, in a way it is uh, uh, with Pacer Cooley Chronicles again. Mm -hmm. It was in it was in 1990, which that's the era that it's written about, and uh, mm -hmm. so that's when I was was there coaching, and uh, we had already started to see considerable. You know, I think we went from uh, I mentioned my 71 class had 100. And, 20 or 130 kids in high school, probably by 1990, we were down to probably less than 50. And uh, so it was certainly beginning to happen at that time. 
but still everybody pretty much had their own we're still fielding their own teams and we were we actually had uh, we didn't have a lot of kids the first year i coached uh, and uh i'm not horribly fond of six-man football so when i agreed to uh when i agreed to coach the team i said i'll, I'll do it but we're going to move up to eight uh even though we really don't have i think we only had 13 boys out but uh so we moved up but but you know everybody had a uh, everybody had their own each school had their own team you know they weren't there was some co-oping going on then but nothing to the extent that's that's happened since then yeah it's it's certainly happened to the schools around billings too it's uh, yes you see them see them combining um uh, like broadview and levina you know for right. instance yes. yeah so yeah for sure